Hey everyone, welcome to a wild wilderness version of Weekly Weird News. The birds are chirping, the air smells good, uh, the sun might affect us, but uh, we'll get through it. Yeah, so getting old sucks. Yeah. The later part where you're really like elderly, it's pretty terrifying to virile young men like us who are at our absolute physical peak. Yeah, time of my life. But uh, one great thing about being super old is that you're under absolutely no obligation at all to really give a single shit anymore. Mm -hmm. You can just say whatever you're thinking, and no one's going to blame you. He's old. Yeah. And uh, that's the case for legendary composer, record producer, and media mogul Quincy Jones, who in an interview with Vulture this week showed that at 84 years old, he doesn't give a single good gosh darn. That's true. The interview, which obviously went viral this week, seems to have originally been intended as a pretty standard career retrospective, uh, talking about Jones's 28 Grammys and his work with Michael Jackson, stuff like that. Typical Quincy Jones stuff. Uh, quickly, though, it turned into Quincy Jones talking shit about various extremely famous people and telling stories that he readily admitted he probably shouldn't be talking about publicly. Right off the bat, he's asked if there's anything about Michael Jackson that most people don't know, and Jones's response is that Michael Jackson was a total song thief plagiarizing melodies, and also not giving songwriting credits to studio musicians who co-wrote his songs. On Michael Jackson's look, Jones said, I used to kill him about the plastic surgery, man. He'd always justify it and say it was because of some disease he had. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, he mentions how he's uh, good friends with the Clintons, and he spent a lot of time at the White House back in the 90s, so the interview asked him why he thinks there's such a strong dislike for the Clintons these days. And uh, well, let's just read this exchange verbatim. So Jones says, it's because there's a side of her, when you keep secrets, they backfire. Like what secrets? Well, this is something else I shouldn't be talking about. Well, you sure seem to know a lot. I know too much, man. What's something you wish you didn't know? Who killed Kennedy? Who did it? Uh, Chicago mobster Sam Giancana. The connection was there between Sinatra and the Mafia and Kennedy, uh, Joe Kennedy. He was a bad man. He came to Frank to have him talk to Giancana about getting votes. I've heard this theory before, that the mob helped win Illinois for Kennedy in 1960. We, we shouldn't talk about this publicly. Where are you from? And then the reporter proceeded to tell him, and uh, they got on with it. Yeah. Nice little break in the conversation. So, yeah, there's that. Case uh, closed. <laughs> yep. Even the, the, those files that were supposed to leak last year that never did. Quincy leaks. Yeah, they don't They don't need to come out anymore. Uh, at one point, he casually mentioned that uh, Elon Musk keeps inviting him to Burning Man, but he's not interested. Stop it, Elon. Elon, stop. Uh, then he calls Jimi Hendrix a coward for refusing to play on one of his albums. Uh, Quincy Jones' first thoughts on rock music? Rock ain't nothing but a white version of rhythm and blues, motherfucker. And he's not wrong. Not wrong. Uh, oh, and his opinion of the Beatles was that, uh, quote, they were the worst musicians in the world. They were no playing motherfuckers. <laughs> Hall was the worst bass player I ever heard. And Ringo, don't even talk about it. Except immediately, he talks about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> he describes a Beatles recording session that he was visiting where, uh, Ringo was spending hours on a single part of the song, having trouble with it. So they sent him to lunch and called up one of Quincy's friends, who came in and nailed it in 15 minutes. When Ringo returned, he asked to hear the playback and said, Oh, that didn't sound so bad. To which Quincy Jones replied, Yeah, motherfucker, because it ain't you. Uh, nevertheless, he says of Ringo Starr, Great guy, though. Yeah, he likes to put a little cherry on top of every mm -hmm. terrible story. He's a he great has. guy, but I have a lot of things I want to publicly shit on him for. Yeah, business-wise, I'm, I'm 84. Great what guy. are you going to do? Yeah. On Harvey Weinstein, Jones said, Weinstein, he's a jive motherfucker. Wouldn't return my five calls. A bully. Five calls. Yeah. On Donald Trump, I used to hang out with him. He's a crazy motherfucker. Limited mentally. A me megalomaniac narcissist. I can't stand him. I used to date Ivanka, you know. But, Wait. But, but, hold on. Uh, he's talking about, he surely he's talking about Ivana. Nope. Ivanka. The, his daughter. Yep. Jared Kushner's wife. Quincy Jones dated Ivanka. That's what he said. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, according to Quincy, Ivanka asked him out to dinner 12 years ago, and he said yes because, quote, she's a fine motherfucker. <laughs> she had the most beautiful legs I ever saw in my life. Wrong father, though. Whatever that means. Uh, I mean, who would want to be Donald Trump's son-in-law? Jared Kushner, obviously. But if Quincy Jones was Donald Trump's son-in-law? At this it, point, I'd, it wouldn't shock He me. makes the best music. Our recurring theme of the interview is... Quincy Jones being brutal and blunt about people that he's apparently close friends with. Uh, asked if Oprah should run for president. He said she doesn't have the chops for it. Again, not wrong. Uh, he calls Bono, quote, a brother who named his son after Quincy. But uh, when asked whether U2 is still making good music, he just shakes his head. Again, not wrong. One person he has nothing but good things to say about is himself. Mm -hmm. Asked if there's ever been a project that he worked on that he wished had been more successful. He replied, what the fuck are you talking about? I've never had that problem. They were all big. 
asked what his greatest musical innovation was, he answered, everything I've done. Yeah, uh, that, again, not, he's, it makes the other story seem that much more real. He's one of the few people out there who doesn't really need to be humble. No, and he doesn't need to lie. No. Although it would be funny if he was. <laughs> that classic Quincy Jones humor that everybody knows yeah, and loves. I, you think I know who killed Kennedy? What are you, crazy? You guys are morons. Yeah, just listen to anything. You'll print that? You guys will pick the meat right off of my bones, <laughs> vulture mag. Uh, at one point during the extended rant about how music today is all terrible, he mentions how musicians don't know various styles. He starts listing off styles like samba, bossa nova, and cha-cha. But then he stops at cha-cha and says, Marlon Brando used to go cha-cha dancing with us. He could dance his ass off. He was the most charming motherfucker you ever met. He'd fuck anything. Anything. He'd fuck a mailbox. James Baldwin, Richard Pryor, Marvin Gaye. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, mailbox is one thing. Yeah. But uh, Richard Pryor, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Brando's bisexuality is pretty well known at this point. But Richard Pryor, he was totally straight, right? Right, Elliot? Right. Well, no, actually. Pryor's widow has now come out and confirmed, thanks to this interview, which, again, adds that little bit of truth to everything he's saying, mm-hmm. that, uh, yeah, Quincy's not wrong. And he was telling the truth. Her husband was actually bisexual and totally had gay sex with Marlon Brando. Or as Shibby calls him, Mar- Marlon Brando. Brando. Yeah, she, so. was like, <laughs> she was like, yeah, man, the 80s was wild. Like, the <laughs> 70s was wild. Was wild. We had the best drugs. Yeah, you should have seen that man dancing the cha-cha in fucking mailboxes. Mm. It happened every week. So, yeah, the whole thing's a fascinating interview all around. You should definitely give it a full read because there's way more to it that's less insane but still super interesting. Also, yeah. just the general cadence of the interview is... It's like jazz, baby. Yeah, and if you skip ahead, you're going to miss references that were brought up earlier. There's a whole section where they talk about uh, astrology, yeah. the interviewer being a Pisces. Come on, man, be a Pisces. Yeah. But yeah, let's move on now to another story. Uh, yeah. An update regarding that Tesla Roadster that Elon Musk just launched into space with the help of his SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. Its initial flight plan would have taken it all the way to Mars, where it was going to orbit that planet for probably millions of years unless we or some other species out there found it and decided to bring it somewhere else for a test drive. That's a bait car up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not going to get too far. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think asking. you're doing, Mr. Alien? <laughs> well, who was I to you're know? coming downtown. Well, uh, actually, plans change. Uh, and after the launch, uh, their, their other staged burns, they proved a little too successful, uh, which uh, now will send the car and its mannequin pilot wearing the SpaceX spacesuit far beyond the orbit of Mars and instead send it directly into the asteroid belt some 243 million miles from the sun. And uh, this will most likely result in the car being completely destroyed by any number of asteroids it may encounter along the way. I hope they got good insurance. So here's my theory. (laughs) I I think Elon planned this the whole time. He wanted to go to the asteroid belt to get destroyed because that mannequin in the car, that's a dead body. And there's also another body in the trunk. There's one in the trunk. And those are people Elon Musk has personally killed. Here's my conspiracy theory, and we'll get to the others. <laughs> Here's mine. The, the company landed the two booster rockets at the exact same time, mathematically sound, uh, just hundreds of feet away from each other, perfectly. Mm-hmm. And yet, they couldn't, they overestimated the burn, mm-hmm. sending it far outside of the orbit. There is no way this wasn't calculated. In fact, like, I, I read in Reddit comments, which aren't scientific fact, but that, like, they were doing the burn, and it would have been accurate, but they're like, now, let's see how far we can make this thing go. Let's see how much extra power let's we Let's open have. this baby up. <laughs> it's the fastest car Turn in the Turn on universe. the VTEC. Yeah. Oh, boom! <laughs> VTEC kicked in. Uh, anyways, the fact that the car will be, well, most likely be destroyed because they overshot their mark, uh, probably not going to sit well with conspiracy theorists who don't believe it actually happened, and definitely won't sit well with the flat earthers out there who, despite the fact that there was a live stream of the launch and the complete orbit of the Earth, uh, they all, all of them, took to Twitter to call bullshit on the entire thing with comments like, nice CGI, and it's fake as fuck, but keep going, little sheeps. Just believe everything that gets served in front of you and don't ask questions. Or this one here. Why isn't the Earth spinning in the background? At school, I was told it spins at 1,000 miles per hour while traveling at 666,000 miles per hour through space. Surely I haven't been lied to my whole life. The Earth's big. It's It's, big, guys. Also, uh, the the guy who who was getting the mean responses on Twitter did a time-lapse, sped-up version. It's like, you can clearly see that... It's spinning. Yes, if you're watching it in live one-to-one... Anyways, uh, let's end with this gem. Have you personally been to outer space? No, you haven't. 
You're taking someone else's word for it. I'd rather believe in the Bible. I hope you realize NASA, SpaceX, and the European Space Agency all work for Satan. Wake up and stop drinking the fluoride. Well, my, my crazy person bingo card is full. Yes. Uh, What's my prize? This, this, this Twitter user, they obviously... They got a lot of work to do. They already found Jesus. Yeah. Saw him. Like, all right, cool. Bible's real. Now I got to go up into space. And then, could you imagine if it really happened? It would still be like, yeah, I mean, but it still looked flat to me. Like, I never saw the other side of it. Yeah. I can't, I can't see all of it. So yeah. it's clearly It's actually flat. flat, and it's a hologram of it spinning. That's, that's how they trick you. But there's one man. There's one man who's out to prove it wrong. Yeah. So while... Those all might just be people trolling on Twitter. And I hope they are. There's still a small but vocal group of people out there that either actually believe that the Earth is flat or have gone beyond trolling and fallen into uh, their own bullshit so hard that there really is only one way for them to admit that the Earth isn't flat by going into space themselves. We reported on a story a few months ago involving one of the leading figures of the Flat Earth Movement, Mike Hughes, and his goal of launching a homemade rocket into space so that he could prove once and for all that the Earth really is flat. Or die a martyr on his quest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he died. Probably the second one. Just like that guy who met Jesus. Mike Hughes died for our sins. They're going to build statues (laughs) of this man. Uh, But by the way, this guy, Mike Hughes, he knows the risks involved. Before becoming a full-time flat earther, he was a daredevil who jumped cars off of ramps and actually fired himself off in another rocket a few years back. Mm. But... Fair to say that uh, launching yourself in a rocket that isn't meant to go any sort of legitimate distance, aside from impressing a crowd and people watching, uh, and uh, launching yourself into orbit, and we shouldn't have to say this, they are two completely different things. Yes, Evil Knievel, he tried to jump the Grand Canyon, but it uh, takes a little more effort to Next get up Next step, orbit. I'm going to jump the moon. Yeah. I'm just going to jump the moon on my, on my motorbike. He's going to be the best daredevil there ever was. Maybe he should have gone up in the road through. Should have. Yeah, I believe the last time we talked about Mike Hughes was uh, and his ambitious goals. Uh, we spoke about one of his many scrubbed launches, and this past week turned out to be more of the same. So while Elon Musk, a man who built an entire company around commercializing rocket launches and eventually space exploration, was launching a Tesla mounted on the Titan Heavy into space and eventually into a fucking asteroid belt, Mike Hughes was humbled once more by a completely failed launch in his own rocket that resembles... More like something that Wile E. Coyote would buy out of an Acme catalog in a desperate attempt to finally get his hands on that damn Roadrunner than a real piece of space equipment. So the the recent failure marks itself as his third failed attempt. This time, Hughes blamed technical difficulties, possibly a bad O-ring. Yeah, which is uh, what brought down the space shuttle in the 80s, and I'm sure that he was just like, yeah, you know, you don't want to mess with these bad O-rings. No O-rings, they'll get you. You saw what happened when they tried to launch a teacher into space, the bad O-rings. Mike Hughes, I do the, the due diligence, not like NASA. No. That was reported by the Washington Post, who I'm sure had their reporters Thrilled. draw straws on who would be spending the week in D.C. covering scandals and who would be going out to Central California to film this bullshit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they ended their coverage of the very eccentric Daredevil quite succinctly. Quote, even if he managed to subsequently rocket pack himself into space by the end of the year, his mission would have ended at worst in death and at best in disappointment as he realized what ancient Greeks and school children already know. The world is round. It has always been round. Mike Hughes... We'll never see its edges. Which is the ultimate period on this story from this reporter who had to go there and deal with this. Yeah. Just like they had that cooked up before they even went there. Wow, I'm going to watch a failed rocket launch. Mm-hmm. Great. It looks like they're filming the Jackass movie with Johnny Knoxville strapped to it. And actually, his worked. Mm-hmm. It's true. Say what you want. It almost his rocket him, worked. But yeah, it worked. It blew the side out of it. But Now, another massive, although clearly less impressive event that happened this past week was the Super Bowl. The Eagles narrowly beat out the New England Patriots. Much to the joy of any Americans living outside of the general Boston area, but there was plenty of weirdness surrounding this whole thing, and one story brings us back to one of our most despised weekly weird characters of the past year at least. And no, it's not Martin Shkreli running a secret underground betting ring, and no, it's not Malachi Love Robinson impersonating a player for one of the teams and sneaking out onto the field either, although that would be impressive. That's really the only way he can go from here. It was that fucking giraffe. April... The perpetually pregnant giraffe and many other animals with human names from around the country, they were forced to use their animal instincts to pick the winner of this year's Super Bowl in the days leading up to the big game. So, how did they fare, Elliot? I mean, they are animals after all, but those animal instincts... It's true. Well, first of all, that stupid giraffe 
Could not have been more wrong because April made the very tough decision to eat the head of lettuce that was sitting on top of the poster for the Patriots. And she failed once again to show even the slightest bit of intelligence. What an idiot. Yeah, stupid giraffe. God. Other animals on the losing side of history were uh, some puppies that Jimmy Fallon stole and trotted out on a stage. Uh, Nicholas the Dolphin of Clearwater, Florida, who was probably just sexually attracted to Tom Brady's cool $5 haircut. Because dolphins, they're the Marlon Brandos of the sea. They'll fuck anything. They fuck mailboxes all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Should They should have put two mailboxes at the bottom of the sea. See, just which, keep them busy. Which one's the dolphin going to fuck? <laughs> which one's the dolphin going to fuck? They fucked Tom Brady's mailbox. Obviously, there were some really smart animals who are clearly psychic out there wandering the wide open plains of whatever zoo they're trapped in. Animals like Bubbles the Elephant, who I'm sure hates its name. Uh, Bubbles the Elephant predicted that the Eagles would win by knocking over the Eagle's helmet with its trunk. Genius. Yeah. Fiona the Hippo from the Cincinnati Zoo, who was no doubt still mourning the death of Harambe and chose the Eagles to win because uh, if she got the answer wrong, well, you know. There's also a sloth, who I assume chose very slowly. Uh, a panda, who actually refuses to have sex. Mm -hmm. uh, and an actual eagle who chose the eagles to win. So, you know what? Maybe these animals are on to something, Elliot. Or maybe it's just a 50% chance that they would get it right, and if enough animals in zoos are offered food connected with a sports team, some are going to guess correctly. I guess we'll never know. We'll never know. We're waiting for the scientific paper to be published on this, but, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. Speaking of the Super Bowl, though, the big game was also responsible for crippling the quick and easy money transfer service Venmo once again because of the sheer amounts of gambling passing through its servers. Yes, guys, even though betting on sports is technically illegal, wink, it still happens, whether regulators want it to or not, because let's face it, it makes the games a hell of a lot more interesting if you got a little bit of money on the line. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, you don't even need to use some shady offshore betting site where you aren't positive that you'll ever actually get paid out or, or chase down your actual IRL friends for cash to make get your payout and, God forbid, vice versa. Yeah, no. What if you owe them? Then they're chasing you down. It's oh, bad. Oh, it sucks. No, it's it's just Venmo. Just Venmo that shit. It's simple. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's also technically illegal and while their terms of service which everyone reads explicitly say that you're obviously not supposed to do that seems like the people behind the scenes are happy to look the other way because this isn't even the first time that their service has gone down for this sort of event now, this is literally their response when asked about the amount of outages that occur during not just this year's super bowl but in the past as well given the super bowl is one of the biggest social events of the year super bowl sunday is one of venmo's biggest payment days of the year to ensure a positive experience for people using venmo members of the venmo team get together to watch the game and monitor systems to make sure no payments are fumbled well that's fun uh, what a fun quirky way to respond to that they didn't even mention gambling because yeah. you know what it could be anything it could be a big bucket of wings yeah or a seven foot long sub uh, listen, we have some advice for you, as we always do. If you're going to gamble on sports or whatever and use Venmo, just uh, in the little tagline there, the, the info line, say that it was $500 for nachos. Big nachos. A lot of nachos. Just don't tag it gambling debt or something. Because, yeah, it's it's reported on. And, also, yeah, uh, stop. Don't, don't set your payments to public. What are yeah. you doing? It's uh, not so a week, stupid. Not a week goes by where I don't see the public chain with a uh, little money with wings on it and a pill next to it. Where it's just like basically saying thanks for the drugs. Also, yeah, th it's like a bank. It's not funny. Like, yeah. People put like hookers and blow in their in their things, and it's just like, all right, you realize that like you you might get like in trouble for this, right? It's not just a. Anyways. What are you a cop? <laughs> you got to tell me if you're a cop, Venmo. Another fumble. Uh oh. During this year's big game happened because of uh, one of those ads. And we already spoke about all the ads and whether or not we liked them on this past Monday's live stream, and we definitely talked about how weird it was that Dodge was using a speech from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to sell its Ram model trucks. Now, sure, the imagery and general vibe they used was blatantly trying to inspire people and really shove the American dream, which apparently includes owning a big truck, down everyone's throats. But using not only a dead person, but a dead civil rights leader to sell a truck was a bit off-putting. Yeah, so on Monday, we only just reacted to the commercial in a general sense, but come to find out, the speech that Dodge pulled their quote from actually, ironically, went on to argue against buying a big extravagant auto automobile in general. Now, in that same speech, the one used in the ad, Dr. King also said, do you ever see people buy cars that they can't even begin to buy in terms of their income? 
You've seen people riding around in Cadillacs and Chryslers who don't earn enough to have a good T-model Ford, but it feeds a repressed ego. So often, haven't you seen people making $5,000 a year and driving a car that costs $6,000, and they wonder why their ends never meet? I mean, Dr. King was also basically a socialist. Sorry, folks. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. yeah, in, the, uh, yeah <laughs> in the context of the, the ad, I guess that doesn't really matter. It's not the most awkward thing in the world. The use of a dead celebrity or athlete, or in this case, civil rights leader, that's what's mostly weird. And it happens yeah. all the damn time, not just with Dodge. But uh, at the very least, this one is made even dumber and more absurd when you factor in the extended version of the exact quote they used. But hey, let's pull ourselves out of this section of the episode with the power of a Hemi engine and get into those headlines. Yeah. Let's rock it away. Starting with missing woman found on latest season of The Bachelor. Uh, and uh, We found her. Yeah, She's so on the TV. She, she was missing from apparently two places, if I remember correctly. She told her mom that she was going to Northern California to get into the weed cultivation business, which, like, I mean, it's a good business to be in. It's burgeoning. Yeah. It's got a lot of room of growth, but uh, then also bailed on that when uh, ABC came calling to have her. She's a free spirit. Yeah. She uh, she sets those sails open, and she's she just goes where the wind takes her and doesn't return her mom's calls. But, yeah, she uh, was reported missing in Northern California. The county that she was missing in had a lot of other missing people, so they put up a post on social media being like, have you seen any of these missing people? And a lot of people Actually, were like, yes. yeah, no, I've definitely seen that one. Uh, She's on The Bachelor. Yeah. She's, she's my favorite too. She, yeah. I think she's gonna she's win. She's quirky. She's cute. She's she's got that pixie look. She's yeah. Um, she's like you know adventurous. A lot of the girls on The Bachelor this season, Elliot, which I recommend you watch because uh, it would it would give you immediate heartburn. It's very cringy. I don't want very that. Very impossible to watch. No. But uh, you know she's she's brave. There's some uh, girls on there that are trying to win the heart of this man from Arizona that uh, they won't even get into cars for a destruction derby because oh I got into a car accident years ago and. It uh, triggers repressed memories, Ooh. but then he made her get in anyway. Good. Good, because it's content. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's the next one. After blunder, San Diego adopts safeguards against scooping homeless people into city garbage trucks. So the, Whoops. the fact that they use the term blunder and scooping uh, makes me hopeful that this person didn't die. They did not. Very close, though. They uh, There was a truck. Well, San Diego is currently engaged in a war on homelessness, which is controversial, yeah. uh, to say the least. It's uh, just like the war on Christmas. Yeah, so they're, they're just going around with crews and garbage trucks into these little homeless encampments and just throwing all the shit in the garbage truck with a compactor. Yeah. And uh, in this case, they found a tent. They were like, hey, is anyone in there? No response. So they just got a crew of, like, four guys to pick up the entire tent and throw it in the back of this wow, truck. Wow, this is heavy. It must have lots of trash yeah, in it. Turned on the compactor, and with just moments... To spare, some a voice inside was like, "Hey, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, get me out of here." Just like in Star Wars. And then, uh, yeah, they got the guy out, and uh, for whatever reason, the person ran away in fear. So they they couldn't well, yeah. identify them. Also, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the adrenaline rush is <laughs> yeah. what. Like, if you didn't Holy start shit. running, you would probably have a heart attack. You have to do something with that I energy. I mean, imagine waking up and your house is inside of a trash compactor. Yeah. Really be uh, give you a jolt. <laughs> Well, you know, hopefully uh, they figured out what the hell to do in San Diego because uh, yeah. it's a problem. But uh, it's not also, not really our fault though. In California, they other states just ship them over. They just ship them over. They're like, well, we don't like the fact that homeless people are freezing to death here on the streets of Minnesota. Minnesota, uh, and let's have them die of yeah, heat stroke in the desert. Let's buy them a one-way bus ticket to California, where they can, where the liberals can take care. Yeah. Of them. So. Moving on. <laughs> Boulder man accused of setting boxer shorts on fire to alert police to shooting that didn't happen. Why? Probably drugs. Yeah, I, think it was, right. I think it was probably drugs. They should check his Venmo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it sounds like he was on one of those, like, his, spice uh, weed and cocaine, just, like, bouncing back and forth mm. and never going to sleep. That'll make you go crazy pretty fast. But, yeah, he got called 911 and said there's... There's a mass shooter. They're, they're going door to door in my apartment complex, he killing everyone. Himself? Yeah, he swatted himself, and the police, uh, in this case, just you know did their basic due diligence. We're like, oh, that's not actually happening. Oh, there's not an active shooter. Yeah. Cool. Case but closed. This guy was frustrated that the uh, active shooter situation that he felt was happening wasn't being addressed, and uh, so he he wanted to call the cops again, but his phone was dead. So he wow. instead used the old Native American tradition of setting his boxer shorts on fire. To Fan attract, attract and... the attention of the law. Wait, hold on. I'm going to read the smoke signal. Oh. Oh, there's an active shooter again at the place that we just confirmed there was no active shooter wow. at. Wow. 
Well, we should check this time. No. Moms say daycare workers wax their kids' unibrows. And and those those kids are fabulous impressed. now. They were like, oh, wow, you know what? My ugly kid's way less ugly now. Yeah. Wow, why didn't I do this? She looks great. No, I mean, these are like four-year-olds, so yeah. like, who gives a shit? But Very like, strange. To me, it sounds like the teacher is also moonlighting at a hair and yeah. like, nails place, just practicing. Yeah. And while you're doing, while while you're sitting around, you're not teaching kids that young really anything. You're just babysitting. She's one of those women that like, oh, aggressively insists on giving her friends makeovers. Yeah. Like all the time. Yeah. We practice some stuff on. Yeah. That. Now she's doing it to small children. That's what happens when you let your friends do your hair. You have bad hombres. It's a hairstyle. Like it's like a two tone. I only know because because of my fiance. Oh. Thousands of Facebook users spread child porn in a misguided attempt to stop child porn. Originally, I thought this was because of the thing that they were using with the algorithm, where we reported on that Facebook was like, "Hey, send us your naked pictures." Which I don't know if I, I don't know if that's still happening. I don't know. Uh, also, like it's very weird, but it's like their algorithm would then analyze the photo and make it so someone couldn't post your yeah. naked pictures. Yeah, it was also only in like Australia. This isn't that. No, it's not that. This is a, uh, you know, a very bad thing is. Uh, d- 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 there's a video apparently on the internet of uh, a, a man molesting a child, and uh, they don't know who the man is. Instead so, of reporting it to the police, in order, well, I'm sure the police are aware of it. Yeah. But in order to exact some civilian justice, they're spreading that video around, being like, "Do you know who this man is? If you do, say something. But if not, send it to all your friends. If, yeah. we, if we if we send everyone on Earth child pornography, we'll solve this case." It's like a terrible chain email. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, uh, yeah, uh, misguided yes. for sure. If you. Uh, are ever in possession of something that you shouldn't be in possession of that you don't want anything to do with, please turn it over to the police instead of sending it to your friends on Facebook. Yeah. It's a bad idea. It's like it's like when Reddit tried to figure out who the Boston Bomber was. Nothing good came of that. I haven't seen that Mark Wahlberg movie, but do they address that in the movie? Uh, I guess we should watch I it. I think they addressed it in the, the show The Newsroom. Uh, oh, yeah, they did. I yeah. remember that, yeah. I don't know if they do it in the Patriots Day or whatever. Yeah. All she has to do to collect a $560 million lotto jackpot is make her name public. She refuses. Because it ruins lives. Yeah. And the lives of everyone around you. It makes them. Yeah, it's just, she has a valid concern being like, I'm not wealthy. I don't want every like old friend and relative I've ever known to come out of the woodwork and like start hitting me up for money. Mm-hmm. So I get it. It's the, uh, the majority of states make you do this. There's some states where you don't have to give your name or you can send yeah. an attorney to do it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's been proven time and time again that winning the lottery will most likely ruin yeah, your life. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, you, you give $560 million. Yeah, you give half a billion dollars to someone who has been poor their whole life. Or, or just, not, just, a, yeah, just not wealthy. You can't, you can't put mega wealth on someone that Yeah, quickly. look what happened to Logan Paul. He yeah. turned into a sociopath. <laughs> I mean, he probably was before that. Yeah. People have interviewed his high school friends. Sounds like a real asshole, but, uh, yeah, yeah that's the problem. Every relative or friend is going to come hit you up for money and... Hey, man. Eventually, like, rob you or something. Yeah. It's bad it's all just, around. It's not good. Don't win the lottery, kids. Don't and if you do, send it to us. We'll don't, take care of the money. Don't play the lottery. Yeah. We'll take care of the money. Send it to us. Anyway, that's it for this week's Weekly Weird News. This yeah. week's a very natural, cold Weekly Weird News. It's a little News. chilly out. Yeah. Uh, be sure to check out the most recent Tech News Day where we talk about that Elon Musk launch and the fact that uh, CDs are finally dead. dead. And then uh, the latest tugs, the Doc. Dr. Disrespect. Doc is back with his Champions Club. And, uh, yeah, check those out, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.